27-year-old Anthony Allen, otherwise called Duma, of Kennedy Lane, Gordon Penn, St. Catherine, has been missing since Monday, November 15. Anthony is of dark complexion, slim build, and is approximately 4 feet 8 inches tall. He has a tattoo on his right arm. Reports from the Spanish Town Police coming into our news center are that Allen was last seen at home at approximately 1.45 p.m., dressed in a red shirt and pants. He has not been seen nor heard from since. Anyone knowing the whereabouts of Anthony Allen is being asked to contact the Spanish Town Police at 876-984-2305 Police Emergency 119 or the nearest police station. In the meantime, 42-year-old Mickey Reed of Johns Road, Spanish Town, St. Catherine, has been missing since Thursday, November 4. He is of dark complexion, medium build, and approximately 5 feet 6 inches tall. Reports from the Spanish Town Police coming into our news center are that Reed was last seen in Central Village, Spanish Town at approximately 11.30 a.m. His mode of dress at the time is unknown. He has not been seen nor heard from since. Anyone knowing the whereabouts of Mickey Reed is being asked to contact the Spanish Town Police at 876-984-2305. Police Emergency 119 or the nearest police station. Still making the news tonight, Councillor for the Montego Bay Northeast Division and Government Senator Charles Sinclair is calling for municipal corporations to be given greater financial autonomy. Senator Sinclair, who is a former mayor of Montego Bay, said the call comes against the background of local representatives having to seek funds from central government each time there's a major project to be undertaken in their parish. He is calling for local authorities, municipal corporations, to be allowed to use provisions of existing legislations in generating funds to undertake capital projects. These provisions, he says, include the Local Authorities Act and the Local Governance and Financial Management Act. Senator Sinclair says it's high time that local authorities be allowed to use the provisions of existing legislations to generate funds to undertake well thought out and meaningful projects. Senator Sinclair added that there are a number of capital projects which could become a reality if this new method becomes a reality. Continuing with the news tonight. Prime Minister Andrew Holness has announced an allocation of $16 million to each Member of Parliament for mitigation and cleanup for the Christmas period. Each constituency will be allocated the sum of $16 million. That is $1 million more than last year. And it will be divided as follows. $7 million for road patching. No reallocation from this area will be allowed. However, you may reallocate an accumulated amount of $5 million from elsewhere in the program to road patching. So seven is the minimum, but you could reallocate to road patching to a maximum of 12. So people don't have any push. So, so, so Madam, Madam Speaker, they, for those persons, they can reallocate to patching if they so choose, or to gully cleaning, or to garbage collection. Prime Minister Holness, speaking in the House of Representatives, announced that of that sum, $4 million is to be allocated to debushing, all of which can be reallocated, but funds from the other areas of the program cannot be reallocated to it. We have taken a deliberate position to focus on the cleaning up of our country during the Christmas period of mitigation. We have also taken a decision to ensure that you have resources for the bushing of roadways and for patching. Madam Speaker, as is the case, these funds will remain available for use until the end of January next year. Meanwhile, the Prime Minister reminded MPs that those selected to carry out the work on their behalf must ensure it is done. 
that there are some persons who want to get the income but not do the work. And those are the ones who will get us into trouble because we are in a different era of accountability. And our supporters need to understand that, that it is not taking up cash and just giving it out. Those days are gone. Those days don't exist anymore. Still tonight, Prime Minister Andrew Holness has made it clear that it is not the intention of the government to once again close schools. Oh, Madam Speaker, we have reopened our schools. We have seen cases reported of possible exposure to COVID-19. We haven't shot them when they have opened. We tell them to sanitize, clean up, isolate the child, keep them at home. But we're not going to close the schools again. So we're just gradually opening up. Partial resumption of face-to-face -face classes began earlier this month after nearly a year and a half of the nation's children only being able to attend classes virtually. Mr. Holness says the country is nearing the point where continued imposition of strict COVID-19 measures is resulting in serious frustration. If it is that we have reached this level of frustration with the measures, uh, so, so much so that it is creating uh, social discontent and creating perverse choices and behaviors, uh, we can't continue to have that. So we have to take down the measures. We will do so gradually and we will face this brave new post-COVID world where it is your responsibility to maintain your social distance, wear your mask, sanitize, use your head and say, where should I go, where I shouldn't go? In tonight's COVID-19 update, the Ministry of Health and Wellness has reported that 29 new COVID-19 cases were recorded, increasing the total of cases to 90,370, while the death toll remains at 2,331. Of the new infections, 15 are women and 14 are men. In tonight's COVID-19 parish breakdown, St. Catherine recorded seven cases, Kingston and St. Andrew recorded six cases, St. Mary recorded five cases, St. James recorded four cases, Clarendon, St. Anne and Hanover recorded two cases each, St. Elizabeth recorded one case, while Manchester, Westmoreland, Trelawney, Portland and St. Thomas have no cases on record for the stipulated period. In the meantime, there were 114 additional recoveries, increasing the total of recovered persons now to 61,138. In the meantime, Jamaicans 50 years and older are now able to access the first and second doses of the Pfizer vaccine. To become vaccinated, members of the public are being encouraged to make an appointment using the Ministry of Health and Wellness's website, which is www.moh.gov.jm, or by calling the National Vaccination Call Center at 888-ONE-LOVE. That's 888-663-5683. The ministry, meanwhile, is continuing to administer the AstraZeneca and Johnson & Johnson vaccines to persons 18 years and older. Members of the public are being encouraged to get vaccinated to protect themselves from severe illness, hospitalization and or death associated with COVID-19. Continuing with the news tonight. The Percy Junior Hospital, PJH in Manchester, has been gifted a new operating theatre bed valued at $10,250. This bed will boost the facility's capacity to perform the 600 operations it does annually. Senior medical officer at the hospital, Dr. Carlos Wilson, explained that the bed, donated by the Raquel Dixon Memorial Fund, RDMF has become the hospital's primary and major operating theater bed, which will be used daily for emergency and elective surgeries. CEO of the PJH, Carlton Nichols, 
thanked the organization for its donation, noting that it is timely and welcomed. Founder of the fund, Oswald Dixon, noted that the RDMF is committed to the health, education, and well-being of Jamaicans. In other news tonight, the Constant Spring Police have charged 56-year-old housekeeper Desreen Stewart of Long Lane, Kingston, 9, with the murder of her brother, David Brown, aged 68. The murder occurred at Long Lane in Kingston 9 on November 11. Reports coming into our news center are that at approximately 10 p.m., Stewart and her brother had an argument during which she pushed him. He fell to the ground and hit his head. Now, while Brown was on the ground, the accused swung a metal gate and hit the now deceased in his head twice. Brown was taken to the Kingston Public Hospital, KPH, where he was pronounced dead upon arrival. Stewart was taken into custody on Thursday, November 11, where she was questioned and later charged with murder. And that's our news package for you tonight. Thank you for tuning in to Mello TV Evening News at 8. I am Shelly Ann Hill. Do stay safe and pleasant viewing.